Cool. Well, thank you everybody for um, joining on with us today. We have several uh, young people joining on today with us. This is our second in our Meet Esteem Professional series. And we also want to thank Mary Jo for being with us. And Kate, we have two um, speakers today. So I'm going to introduce Mary Jo first. She's going to um, be our first speaker and then Kate will be speaking a little bit um, later. So Mary Jo Papich is known for her leadership in arts education and has spread the gospel music from the heart of the Midwest to South Africa. She is co-founder and past president of the Jazz Education Network now in 44 countries. She's has served public school education for 35 or more, more years as a teacher fine arts administrator for many different school districts and it's her vision that all children will know and benefit from the arts. She has received, received numerous honors and serves on many advisory boards, selection committees, and is also an author. So I'm sure she'll talk to you about all those different things. And she has a quote from a student, which I think is really great. Uh, it says, Mary Jo Pavich continues to inspire those around her to pursue the arts and arts education with passion, making a positive difference today and in the generations beyond. I love that. So thank you, Mary Jo, for being with us. I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, Jay. Really appreciate it. Hey, everybody. I'm happy to be here because 4-H was just so meaningful to me. And I, uh, I wouldn't be where I am today without 4-H. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about today, but I wanna say, first of all, students, 4-Hers out there, you're my favorite people, okay? I love kids, I've always loved kids. And um, I knew in fifth grade that I wanted to be a music teacher because I love music and I love working with, with kids. Um, but we're gonna to talk today about the arts in action. And so, um, can you either type the answers or unmute yourself and tell me what are the arts? What are the, there's like, there's like five, four or five art forms that everything comes under. And um, what would be the art forms? Can I get some answers here? Don't be shy. There's no wrong answers. I'll make it fit somehow. Yeah, anything, okay. My favorite art form is music, okay? So what other art forms are out there that you watch and enjoy and are part of your life every day, but we don't think about it and that's why I'm talking about it. What other art forms? Do any, any of you, do any of you um, take dance lessons, study dance? That's an art form, right? What about, do some of you draw and color? Yes, of course you do. That's an art form, right? And how many of you uh, watch YouTube or TV or, yeah, everybody, drama theater, right? So we have a lot of art, art forms, music, visual arts, dance, drama theater, and everything in the art world comes under one of those categories. And um, I'm going to talk just a little bit about that. And, and uh, I, I'm going to want you to tell me your favorite art form pretty soon. But how does music affect your daily life? I personally can't even imagine going through one day without music in my life. Mm -hmm. And um, again, I want, I want you all to talk a little bit or, or type it in. I'm sure you've probably heard music already today. Where did you hear music already today? Can you type it in? Or unmute yourself and tell me where. Don't be shy. I see Amelia's typing. The radio. Of course you heard music on the radio. Absolutely. What? Where else? Where else did we hear music this morning? The piano, wonderful, we've got a piano player, that's great. Okay, you heard music on, that's real music, we're playing piano, and, or even if we just listen to it. What, where else have we heard music already today? On the birds. On the what? Birds. Birds, <laughs> that's great. Great, 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 and TV, someone said TV, for sure, most of us, 
click that TV on without even thinking about it. And we have music. Oh, I play music on my phone when I'm cooking from Emily. Of course, Emily, that is wonderful. That is just wonderful to play music on the iPhone. And it's all around us really, isn't it? It's just everywhere. And um, we don't think about it because we take it for granted. We are music everywhere. What about when you shop or when you could shop before the pandemic? We hear it in the stores. They, they want, they influence, they want you to they listen to music and feel good so you'll buy more products, right? And we want you to listen to music. So um, I have to tell you, there's all kinds of careers you can have in music. At church bells down the street, Marge says. Absolutely, I live right by a church, so I hear the church bells in downtown Peoria, okay? So that's beautiful, absolutely. Be aware the next few days of where you're hearing music, okay? And, um, but there's all kinds of careers in music. I'm gonna tell you today about mine, but just real quick, real quick, um, there are some areas of music that you can go into, and I went into music education. And so I have been a general music teacher, like your music teacher, and a band director and a choir director uh, at church and um, a private music instructor. If you're thinking about going into performance, say you love to perform and you want to go into performance, well, music, music performance goes well well beyond the pop stars that you listen to, okay? You can be an individual a uh, soloist, a group vocalist, instrumental performer, you might have your own band and you might have another career. And so then music isn't a vocation, it's an avocation. And you would perform with that group. Like the local people we hear sometimes around the Peoria area, some of them are quite outstanding. You could be a composer, you can be a conductor. Um, if you're in radio, you want to might want to have a career in radio, TV, film, a disc jockey, you all know on the radio, your favorite DJs, right? Audio producer, a videographer, um, you might want to be a, a radio, TV promoter, you might want to be a booking agent. Um, then there's the whole music production and recording, and music labels hire an arsenal of people to produce and mix and master, so record label Owner, talent agent, marketing, a record producer, engineer, attorneys, especially those in copyright, advertising execs. And then there's the whole area you can get into of being, say the groups go on tour when there's not a pandemic. So you need a manager, you could be a manager, a sound technician, you could be a dancer, a background singer, event manager, nightclub manager, um, wardrobe, you can even do security. So there's all kinds of areas that you can do and um then once music's ready to perform and record then we have then we have uh we have to sell it right so we sell our our music and that takes that takes a music store a music buyer music outlet and um website developer you could also be an instru a music therapist or a vocal therapist or music repairman or build instruments is all kinds of areas. And these areas of the performing arts that I just went over in music are also transferable to dance and to theater. And then the, the visual arts is a little different. Okay, but remember all this information is only a Google away, right? All you gotta do is Google it. And so, um, you have literally uh, in art, I, the social media is so big, right? Um, the, the 3D animation, uh, video production specials, graphic design, filmmaking. You might want to be an interior designer, a fashion merchandising, photography. It goes on and on and on. So there's plenty of things you can do. And um, I became where my hobby of music became my career, okay? It became my career. And I um, have loved it. And I'm gonna show you my quick story, okay? And if you've got any questions, just shoot them in the chat section, okay? Yeah, sure. Um, I will say that I, uh, I grew up in a little town in Iowa 
and I, I'm going to put you on gallery view. Raise your hands. I know where this is a Peoria area, but raise your hands if you live in kind of a small town or in a rural area. Was I the only one? Okay, Amelia. Um, yep, Robin. And sometimes you live in the city as I do now. I'm in the big tall twin towers downtown, but um, I was in a little town and I grew up, let's see if you can see this. Here were my brothers and sisters. I was the youngest of seven. See that little one in the corner? Shake your head, that's me, okay? And my daddy died when I was a year old. So I grew up with my mom raising me, but I had all kinds of loving brothers and sisters. In fact, two sisters are here today. They're right here today. And um, they're with me. And we grew up singing. And I had a big brother that played trumpet. Here he is playing two trumpets. He went into the army and he was playing at trumpets. He, oh, he loved playing. So that influenced me along with my sisters and of course, good music teachers along the way. And um, from there, I, I, we grew up and we had a store. So we got to know people and um, I played trumpet and I sang. I joined 4-H and my mom said, oh, don't join 4-H. That means I have to do stuff. I have to do, I don't have any time. But most of the kids who are in 4-H have parents that help them and I don't have time. If you found that out, sometimes their parents are busy. So I said, no, mom, I'll do it myself. I can do it. And for eighth grade graduation, she bought me a sewing machine and I made all my own clothes and I became very active in 4-H. But most of it, I will tell you, was in talking, okay? I took demonstrations to county fair and to state fair. And through 4-H, I went to leadership camp. I did all kinds of great things. And I even won a trip to um, Chicago where I was, a, a, I was a state winner in automotive safety. Can you believe that one? I was the Iowa winner in automotive safety and I could barely drive, but, but I promoted safety and, and did talks all over and did all night coffee stops for, on holiday weekends for people. And, and then I also got to go to the citizenship conference in Washington, DC, which literally changed my life. Okay. It was, it was wonderful. So um, I, it was just all just great. So I went to college and I worked my way through college and I started teaching in a little town and I ended up moving to Peoria. I already had a sister here and I moved to Peoria and I started substitute teaching and then I started teaching at Harrison and Keller and Roosevelt and Calvin Coolidge. And then I got a band job at a high school, which I loved. It was a Woodruff High School. Woodruff High School is now closed, but it used to be. Um, it's there on the, um, the East Bluff. And I love teaching and we did so many good things together and we traveled all over. Here's a picture of my marching band in a crazy shot. Can you see him? Isn't that a big band? Yes, it was a big band. And here I am over here on this side. And we traveled all over. We traveled all over and um, we did all kinds of exciting things and you can too if you're in band. Okay, we went to Florida a couple of different times. This is a citrus bowl. We went to Disney World and we also were the premier band in the Macy's July 4th. Fireworks spectacular and um, it was so exciting. And then I thought, well, I want to get uh, another degree. So I went to Bradley and I got administrative degree and then I uh, became the district fine arts advisor for all 35 schools in Peoria. And what did I do? I started a uh, jazz all-star program. So I worked with schools from four, four cities, uh, excuse me, four schools. And here's a picture of them down at the riverfront. And I'm gonna play a little song for you right now. And if you listen close, we were on a European tour. See if you can guess what country we were in on this. It's only one minute and it's pretty cool and i try to speak the language when i'm there so listen and see what you think 
This is Pure Jazz All Stars. Before you were born. Bonjour. Peoria Jazz All Stars from Illinois. Okay. Peoria, Illinois, she said. the CD cover for that. Here I am directing the band. So I got to travel all over the world with kids. I love with kids. Okay, can you tell me, any anybody guess, what country were we in that performance? Give me a shot on the chat. I'm going to look at chat. Are you there? Is that in Germany? No, but not too far away. Anybody else? Okay, I said, Mi chiamo Mary Jo Papich. And um, we were actually in Italy at the Umbria Jazz Festival. And then we also performed in Montreux, Switzerland at the famous jazz festival. So it was very, very cool. And we had so much fun, didn't we, sisters? Yes, we did. It was just fun, fun, fun. Get up, get up. And um, here's one more shot. I encourage you to get involved with all the area high school programs are really great. And um, so then I, I was really busy and I became an administrator. I still was with kids and I started running programs. Here's down in New Orleans with my buddy, the great trumpet player down there. I did it in Mexico. And what's exciting is I, and I became, I was an author of two different books. So here's one for the jazz directors. And here's one for just came out, rehearsing the jazz band, because jazz has been my thing. And um, I was really fortunate enough, I'm going to show you this and, and, and just do a little bit more, to win a big award. And um, this is it. It's like a gold Olympic medal. I don't know if you can see it, but um, there were 19,000 people there. And my name is engraved on it. And my sisters are holding this up. You have to get back over here, girls. Okay, here it is. Okay, now you can, can you hold it up higher? Well, then just move it up. Keep moving it up, Mar. There we go. See the big poster? Keep going up. There we go. There it is. Yes, that's my mug on there. So they had a big party for me because I, I won this award. And I started an organization called the Jazz Education Network, and we are in 44 countries now. So I love 4-H. And I will tell you something else, you guys, and that is this. I didn't think, okay, we're good now. <laughs> I, I didn't think, you don't think about money when you choose your career, but you should think about it a little bit, right? And if you want to have money to travel and do the things, uh, people said, oh, there's no money in teaching. But I found that teaching was very good to me. It's, you get it. Um, and many of the careers, I mean, the playing angle is great. It's just like in sports and you choose to be a player. Well, not everybody makes it to the top, right? It's the same thing in, in drama and theater. And art. But teaching, we always need good teachers. And for me, teaching has been really good. I remember starting at $8,000 a year. And I'm telling you this just to get a little concept in your mind. So that's less, I made less than $1,000 a month. When I retired as an administrator at a wealthier school, I was making about that a day, okay? So about $1,000 a day. And yes, isn't that amazing? So I'm telling you that to say that follow your heart, follow your passion, follow your dreams. 
I um, keep your eye on the prize. You'll kind of want to do things sometimes. You'll have to do things. Thank you for the comments. That's awesome. Congrats. I have to tell you, um, it's about uh, working together. In fact, when you're in an ensemble, whether it be theater or music or uh, dance, you learn individual life skills. 4 Hers, you learn, you have character building skills, team building skills, work skills that you can transfer into work life, communication skills, you're preparing for the future and you become a complex thinker. You care and understand people. We become responsible citizens. We care for the human spirit. And I personally believe in all the arts for all the kids, okay? I want you to stay with 4-H and I want you to keep, follow your dream, follow your heart. And how do you do all those things? You, you continue to make good decisions, okay? Make good decisions from anything from, from picking your friends to whether you should do your homework or not. You should. Um, good attendance at school, good attendance. Oh, I forgot this. And helping others and um, be kind to one another. Be very kind. You can do this. My sister's just passed over one more picture. I don't know if you can see this one. There I am. I think I must be about three years old, right, Joanne? I don't know if you're that old. Trying to play the trumpet. <laughs> well, that's a so, and then here's another. Oh, put these up. Another one. Marching band. Yes. Everybody loves the marching band, and I marched in enough parades. We did too. <laughs> and they did too. <laughs> so, how about quick questions? What can I answer? What can I help you with? Uh, um, I I'm just, was so excited to to talk to you and share a little bit about my life. But what can I help you with, or what can you share with me that is? What are your, what's your favorite art form? Or even something in the STEAM area um, that you're thinking about considering for a career. I know it's a long way off, but like I said, I knew when I was 10, I wanted to be a music teacher and it's been a wonderful career choice for me. And it can be for you. Oh, so, <laughs> so questions comments nothing Judy are you there Emily? we have one we have a couple in your chat in the chat uh, Mary Jo um, cool. Emily what can young people be doing right now if they're interested in going into a music career that's a good question and I can tell you what to do one get active as much as you can, be in your school band or choir, whatever it is you wanna do. And I'm gonna say also, try to take private lessons or with, a other, with an older student or a professional, take lessons. If you can go to camp, that would be great. And then it's okay to get together with your friends and play together and make it fun, okay? Make it fun, but practice and get to know your instrument. If you like singing, sing as much as you can, get active in theater. Or choir. Now we are, as you know, because of the pandemic, we're kind of at a standstill in the performing arts. Visual arts people, they can go right ahead and keep painting and drawing, can't they? But we are kind of on a holding pattern. So watch YouTube, okay? Watch your favorite. Have you all seen Hamilton yet on TV? You know, um, I saw it, you know, back when it first came out and it was just exciting the other night. In fact, we're going to watch it again today. So are there any grants that we need to investigate for a musical playground? Well, that's a big question. I, you just have to Google search, literally, grants for specific needs, because many times uh, uh, equipment, uh, instruments, those type of things are a little hard to uh, come by with grants. Um, but just Google, many times, your school will have all the bigger instruments. So, um, you know, percussion and then the drums, um, 
bass clarinets and baritones and tubas, the bigger instruments are furnished at school. Um, and many times the other ones are too. Do you have any more pictures? How cute is that? Do we have any more photos? <laughs> How sweet are you? Here's, here's one taken downtown right by the river, the bridge that's being worked on. And I have them all over the place, don't I, sisters? Yeah, I sure do. And uh, here's, a, here's a cool one when we were in Montreux, Switzerland. I was a little thinner back then, girls. <laughs> we all were. Here's a crazy one. We always get a serious shot, and I like getting the fun shots, too. That's a Wood, Woodruff High School group. Fun? We had fun. Everything I do, I, we have fun, right, right, sisters? We just do. You want to get here and go sit on the phone? And um, so we're going to stand one on each side. And I'll turn this around. So how about if we just sing? My sisters and I haven't practiced, but we just like to sing a quick little song like we used to growing up. And this is probably something you've never, ever heard, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, just get in here a little bit. Jan, can you get on this side or no? There, perfect. That's it. That's all I just have. Okay, Mar, you're gonna start us. Oh, oh no, we're gonna do bum 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 since Mabel ran off with Tom, listen to the words. The town was peaceful and quiet before she came on the scene. The lady had started a riot, disturbing the suburban routine. The naughty lady of Shady Lane, so delightful to hold. The naughty lady of Shady Lane. She's delectable, quite respectable. Bum ba yum bum 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 bum. And she's only nine days old. Hi. Give him a wave. Hi, everybody. So we grew up singing and doing things like that. And we encourage them to do that, don't we? Um, yes. We just keep singing, keep playing your instrument. Um, I find for me um, that it's, a, you know, it's my cultural bath that makes me feel better when I get to listen to the sing. So I'm going to say use your head, heart, hands, and good health to better living, living like that 4-H pledge says, you won't go wrong. And, and continue to thank your, your leaders, Judy and Emily and Kate. And Mar Thank your leaders because they they put in a lot of time to make this all special for you. And uh, I say go for each. Yes. Thank you, Mary Jo, so much. <laughs> yes, and thank you, Mary Jo's sisters, for accompanying her in that lovely song. That was wonderful. We loved it. What a treat. Good. <laughs> oh, you have several comments in here. I don't know if you saw Mary Jo, but. Oh, my, my mom has a 78. Good job. It's a 78 of that song. Oh, wow. Good job. I like that song. Thank you so much. It was truly our pleasure. Okay. Truly our pleasure. And, and uh, I wish you may all have the arts in your life throughout your life. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna kind of switch over, um, switch gears over to Kate now. Kate Miller is the um, summer STEM assistant for us for 4-H this summer and this spring. And she is going to be sharing a little bit from a student's perspective about um, what you can be doing to explore different careers that you might be interested in, whether it's music or the arts or any type of career. So. Kate, I'm going to turn it over All to right. you. Hey, thank you. And thank you so much, Mary Jo. That was so cool and fun. Um, so I'm just going to go on a little bit more about kind of like what are some stuff that you guys can sort of start thinking about um, for like your careers. If you're interested in like arts or sciences and stuff like that, some stuff that you can consider um, like 
as your student going through middle school and high school, some stuff that you can do um, to kind of go along and continue to think about your career and future. Uh, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about myself. So I'm Kate. Um, I'm from Peoria, Illinois. <laughs> um, I uh, went to Holy Family Grade School in Peoria, and I went to Peoria Notre Dame High School. I'm currently a student at ICC, and I study um, communications, public relations, um, and I have plans to go on to ISU, hopefully in the future, and um, continue my degree in that. Um, but my job currently right now is I work for the University of Illinois Extension as their summer STEM STEAM coordinator. Um, and what I do is I help Judy um, come up with stuff to kind of help encourage different STEAM and STEM careers. Um, so growing up, I was involved in everything. <laughs> I loved doing sports. I was in band. I was in choir. Uh, but my favorite of all time was I was in 4-H. And I've been in 4-H for about 11 years now, which is crazy to think about. But um, I actually joined 4-H um, because we, I really wanted to join Girl Scouts. All my friends were joining Girl Scouts, but my class in grade school wasn't big enough and we couldn't find a leader. And my mom was like, well, I never did Girl Scouts growing up, but I did 4-H. And I was like, I don't know. I mean, like my mom grew up in more of a rural area and I didn't know anything about 4-H. Um, but then we got looked into it and my 4-H club actually started out as a robotics club. <laughs> so me and like my brother um, and my friends, we all started joining and we did like robotics and then we slowly moved on to bigger things. And my main thing growing up was I showed my art projects. I did art projects and cooking and that slowly turned into kind of more leadership projects. Um, and more communication projects as I kind of figured out more what I was interested in and what I like to do. Um, so I'm going to talk about some things that you guys can start doing um, at school or outside of school um, to kind of help figure out what you like to do and maybe think about for like a future career. Um, so the first thing is classes. So you're in school now. Um, I'm sure you all have a favorite subject. Do you guys have like a certain one that you really like? Maybe you like science over English, or maybe you're not into like math, but you prefer doing like art classes and stuff like that. Um, but the thing that you can think about is think about what those subjects you like, you like and which ones you don't like too much. Um, and then as you get older and as you go from like middle school, to high school, you can slowly start to choose some of your classes. Um, so that's important to think about maybe to, um, try out new subjects. So try out, if you're really interested in art, maybe take like a fun art class or um, if you're interested in different languages or communications and stuff like that, maybe try taking a science or like a Spanish class. Um, if you're interested in maybe doing like engineering and stuff like that, maybe focus on your science classes. Um, but I kind of just encourage you guys to kind of have an open conversation with your teacher and be like, oh, I really enjoy the science subject that we're in right now. Maybe talk about like, hey, what are some different like careers that I could do with this? Or um, like, I really enjoy uh, learning about different animals. I love animals. Maybe talk to like your science teacher and be like, oh, like how, what are some different career paths and stuff like that you can do with your classes and target it towards that way. Um, the next thing you guys can do, oops is find out what you like to do. So lead with your strengths. That's what I always learned was find out what you're kind of good at, what you like to do. Um, for me, what I found out is through 4-H really is um, our club kind of slowly turned into, we got more kids join in and I was kind of the older one. And so it kind of led to more of like me and my friends being like the leadership positions in our 4-H club and growing up to be like junior leaders. Um, and then you slowly start taking more projects and stuff like that. Um, so, trying to read with our, you like math and you guys like art looks like in your chat, which is awesome. So you guys do have, like, you have certain interests right now that even, you know, what you, um, you like to do. Uh, so, oops, we'll go back here. <laughs> so obviously, I mean, you guys have preferences right now, but just slowly what you can start doing is like, if you say that you like math and start thinking about maybe what are some careers that you can do, do you also like math and art? So maybe think about maybe something like architecture or 
or something, find ways that you can combine your common interests. But you can also think about what you like to do. Are you more of an introvert and extrovert? I mean, I've always been kind of extroverted. So obviously I've enjoyed more of like the talking aspects and doing more of the communication side. And that's slowly what's led me to my decision um, when I go to college, that when I went to college, that that's what I wanted to go into. Um, you can also think about different work environments that you want to um, that you might want to work in someday. Um, if you're interested in your sciences, do you want to be a veterinarian? Do you like working with animals? Do you like working with people instead? Maybe you could instead of doing like a veterinary science, you could be kind of the more um, like people that talk with the people about their animals and stuff like that. Yeah. So I mean, you guys know. Um, so an extrovert and an introvert, if you're more extroverted, that means that you're kind of more like a people person and, um, and both of them, like you can be around people, but introvert, you're more work to yourself and you more like process things um, on your own. Um, but yeah, and if you guys have questions along the way, feel free to put them in the chat and I'll try to answer them. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like kind of what Mary Jo said too, is she started off her career as, um, she was just following what she loved to do. And that's really what you gotta start thinking about do is just start stuff that makes you happy. Um, so the next step kind of going on is to seek experience. Um, so find a mentor that you like. So if you have a family friend that is a doctor, maybe at like a, a family gathering, be like, hey, like I'm really kind of interested in becoming a doctor someday. What was like kind of your paths or is it maybe sometime that I could like come to your office and see exactly what you do. Um, Amelia said that she wants to be a vet. So maybe a first step that you can do seeking experience is see if um, any like local animal shelters is needing um, volunteers. So you get more experience working in that kind of like zone um, with your interests. Um, another big thing is networking. So do any of you guys kind of know what networking means? Any ideas? Well, networking kind of just means that building a group of people and reaching out. Um, so like talking to a family friend member, that's kind of networking of like, oh, like they're a doctor, maybe that I can um, get to know them and um, about their career and what they do more. And then that will lead to like a job shadowing. Um, and then as you get older, those job shadowings can be turned into internships or even apprenticeships. So. Um, a lot of times apprenticeships is more of like a hands-on. So like if you're um, interested in kind of more of like the trades. So if you're interested in being like, oh, I really want to be um, like an artist. An artist a lot of times has like apprenticeships. Like um, so you would go and like you would apprenticeship underneath them and do their job and kind of help them out with their job. Um, Someone said that they wanted to be a graphic designer. That would be a really cool one to, as you get older to start thinking about different types of job shadowings or apprenticeships that you could do underneath that also. Um, one thing that you guys can do now when you're younger too is start thinking about different summer programs that you can do um, to give you experience in a field that you like too. So um, obviously you guys are here today, so you're interested in some part of like the STEAM um, careers and maybe you're not maybe you're just checking it out which is totally awesome uh, but maybe looking for like summer programs such as like stem camps or um, if you want to be a nurse um, you could sign up for like I know like the Red Cross wants to be or, or like Red Cross used to offer like babysitting training um, or stuff like that that would go along with kind of like kind of what a nurse has to learn to do um, I know one thing that really helped me along the way is um, when I got older, I joined, and I was still in 4-H, I joined a specific part of 4-H that was, it's called a special interest club. Um, and that's where it's kind of targeted towards um, like a certain interest. And um, one of the ones I joined was called the Teen Teachers. And what they did is they were kind of like a group of leaders that we still have them. And they're such an awesome program. So if you're interested when you're older, um, but what you do is we were kind of like a camp counselor and we would teach different lessons. It was all about nutrition. So it was all nutrition camps that we were teaching. And I kind of, that's where I kind of figured out like, oh, okay, I kind of, I, I really like doing this. I like talking around people. I like kind of helping organize and plan these different lessons. So that's kind of like, leads you down your career path. So it doesn't necessarily, you have to know exactly what you want to do because I mean, I'm older and I still don't know like exactly what your plan is. And it changes as you get older, obviously. 
Um, but just putting those, going to those different programs and seeking different experience or advice from um, different adults and career workers about what their career does just to keep an open mind about maybe something that you might want to do someday. Um, so here, the last thing I'm going to talk about is just some questions to ask about um, if you are interested in a certain career. Um, so maybe think about like, what is that, like you can ask them, what is your job responsibility or what does a typical day look like you on the, look, look like for you on the job? Um, you might want to think about like what kind of hours you want to, like they work and stuff like that. So like obviously a job like being an ER doctor um, versus like if you want to be a doctor that's kind of like a nurse practitioner doctor, um, those are kind of different hours and you, you might really like the, like the fast paced version of working in like an ER, um, but maybe you like to know your, get to know your patients really well. Um, so maybe something like a nurse practitioner instead would be kind of more of your interest in, yeah. Um, so maybe talk about also about um, what qualities are really helpful for having the job. So obviously um, if your job is very like people oriented, you wanna have those good communication skills. Um, so maybe think about different ways that you could build up those communication skills as you get older, be like, oh, I kinda wanna, this is what I wanna do someday. So I should build up these skills um, to kinda learn more about it. Um, another good question to ask is, um, how did you become interested in your field? Some people know from when they're super younger that this is what they want to do. And sometimes people, um, they follow a different career path. I know like last week on our STEM call, if you were here, um, we talked to Sharon and he um, was originally, he wanted to be like a, a brain surgeon doctor and it, he slowly like, he kept wanting to do it. but. He always, he found a passion for teaching instead at a hospital. Um, and so that was what led him to his career there at jump training. Um, so yeah, maybe asking them their story also and kind of give you some advice about um, what leads them to like that career and what you can do to lead to that career also. Um, another good thing to ask is maybe what's the hardest part of the job or what you love most about your job? Um, clearly they're there for their job and they love it for a reason. So. Um, maybe asking them like why they love it and what they want to do. Another really great question to ask them is about their education requirements. Um, so obviously you guys are kind of like in middle school right now going into high school, but once you get in high school, you're kind of more preparing for college. So maybe ask them about like, what are some classes that you really wish you took in high school that would have led you to your career sooner? Or what are ones that you really loved doing that kind of really helped you when you got to college to get your degree for this certain field? Um, so that's really awesome to ask to um, also experiment experience uh, requirements. Um, some jobs really um, they require a lot of experience. Um, so maybe you ask them like, oh, like is, do you guys have any like volunteers? Like one of you said you wanted to be a vet. Maybe ask and see if the like a veterinary office um, like has any like volunteer options for that. Um, so maybe seeing like what you can do to help build up experience um, to make sure that that's kind of what you want to go into. And lastly, another really great piece of advice you can always ask people um, about their careers is what is advice you would give to someone who is wanting to get started in that career? Um, and I believe that was a question that we asked Mary Jo earlier also about kind of um, like how she got started and if someone was interested in getting into the music career business, like what are some different routes that they might want to go? Um, yeah, so that's kind of what I got. <laughs> um, if you guys have any questions about maybe some things that you can do or that I have done like growing up to get to college um, about different like opportunities or anything like that. No? Great. Well, thank you so much, Kate, for sharing um, your advice. I really um, like what you said about um, focusing on, you know, things that you enjoy and um, what you are interested in, because I definitely agree, you know, when you're younger and you're just trying to figure out, um, you know, what you like to do, paying attention to uh, what you love and what you like to do is a great way to kind of narrow down some interests. So thank you um, for sharing that. And um any questions from anybody for either Mary Jo or Kate? Well, you have them now that Kate gave you all those great questions to ask. You might have a new question for Mary Jo too. Um, so 
we'll give you one last um, chance to ask either of them a question before we sign off for the day. Mary Jo, we have one question that we asked the speaker last um, week that I thought was really interesting. And so I'm kind of curious what you would say to this too. Um, what skills have you found to be ex um, essential for success in the different careers you've had over the years? That one's easy. I think communication <laughs> skills. I really do. Um, I think communication skills and um, students, Today, um, you guys are growing up so fast and so smart because you have this whole world around you that you just get online and find out the answers to anything you want. But be careful not to do this too much, okay? Because what's happening is um, our kids are growing up because I've interviewed them, okay, for jobs. And they're growing up not with good verbal skills. Our body language, our verbal skills, our reasons for success. Uh, for me, in my success, it has wasn't because I was a great musician. There were far better, far better. My sister has better pitch than I do. I mean, it, it, so for me, it has been making good decisions and good communication skills, being able to um, connect just as well with the custodian at the school as you do the superintendent or the board president in education. Um, so be bold and lift your head up, put those shoulders back. And when you get a chance to speak in front of the class or to your family or make a presentation, you do it with a lot of confidence. You have everything you need right in here. Just dig down and pull it out. Right, Kate? Yep. Yes, communicate, communicate, communicate. Sisters, anything to add? Skills. My Do sister it. said the public relations skills. All over it. All the and, um, uh, and they also said, you forgot to mention, I did start an organization, a nonprofit on jazz. It's called Jazz Education Network. If you Google my name, it'll come up. But we are now in 44 countries. And we've been in existence since 2008, 12 years. 44 countries. That's pretty cool. And I've traveled, got to travel to so many of them. But it's because of communication and people being, um, knew they could trust me and follow me. And um, yeah, social, social skills, communication skills, all that. And uh, these leaders have it. And I know you will too. So just keep working on those skills. Okay. Wonderful. Well, thank you both so much for taking time um, to be with us today and to share both of your stories. And um, we're just so thankful for, for all of you. There was one more question in the chat box that asked if you were interested in being a teacher. Uh, maybe. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm thinking about it. It's definitely up there and kind of going more towards my general kind of communication degree right now. But it's definitely, it's crossed my mind. <laughs> you would be great at it, Kate. It would be great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the world needs more good teachers, okay? Definitely. Yeah, it'd be good.